Welcome to all of our members, and thank you for joining us today at our first virtual Real Estate Roundtable annual meeting. We have a wonderful agenda planned for you today. We meet at an extraordinary time that is characterized by a combustible mix of public health, economic, business, political, and racial justice upheaval that is unique in our country's history. And it is also a time of extraordinary optimism as businesses are reopening, the economy is gaining traction, individuals are getting back to work, or at least thinking about it. And a powerful, diverse group of Americans is committed to finally accomplishing systemic change that has eluded us for decades. These conditions have come together to create challenges for us, yet we approach them as unprecedented opportunities to once again prove our mettle and continue to grow, elevate, and evolve as an organization. The Real Estate Roundtable is committed to leading with a positive voice during this critical time. We are navigating this environment from a position of financial and membership strength with a very strong brand and credibility among policymakers and with an incredible amount of experience earned from our 20 years of success, including our responses to the 2009 financial crisis and the passage of tax reform in 2017. As always, we continue to be an effective, bipartisan, fact-based advocate for federal policies that are good for our economy, our industry, and our country. Jeff will address these policy prescriptions in more detail. Suffice it to say that they include a national pandemic risk insurance program modeled on TRIA, a federal safe harbor from COVID-19 lawsuits when businesses take appropriate precautions to keep workers and customers safe, and a plan to repair what Jeff calls the rent obligation chain. As an organization, Jeff and the team are on the forefront of advocating policy solutions. They are truly outstanding, and I want to recognize them for their leadership, their sophistication, and their efforts. We're also making important progress as an organization. I refer you to our strong statement advocating for racial equality. As leaders in the real estate industry, we must speak out against racism, take deliberate actions to promote diversity and inclusion, and help business, political, and community leaders come together and take concrete actions that address widening inequality and systemic racism that have plagued our nation for far too long. We pledge, as many of you have already done in your own companies and communities, to take action and be part of the solution. Now, for years, we've had a strong partnership with the Real Estate Executive Council, or REIS. REIS is the leading trade association formed to promote the interests of minority executives doing business in commercial real estate. Our liaison with REIS is entitled Building Communities, and it has included a roundtable membership that supports minority real estate executives. Today, we're announcing several, several new steps with REIS, including the addition of its CEO, Ken McIntyre, to our board, and the establishment of a joint initiative between our organizations to identify policies and actions that will measurably improve current inequities and strengthen our overall real estate community. The roundtable will also establish a standing committee to further these efforts, which build on our track record begun by former roundtable chairs, Bob Larson, Randy Rowe, and Bill Rudin, among others. As we finish our second de decade, and move into our new fiscal year on July 1. The roundtable is also pleased to announce the appointment of other new board members as we continue to refresh our board 
and maintain its excellence. We welcome to our board Brandon Shorenstein, CEO of Shorenstein Properties based in California, Bill Stein, the CEO of Digital Realty and current chair of NARI based in Austin, Texas, and Tom Baltimore, the CEO of Park Hotels and Resorts, the Hilton spinoff, as well as lead director of Prudential Financial, Inc., and a member of the board of directors of Auto Nation. Please join me in congratulating all four leaders on their appointment to the Real Estate Roundtable Board. I know they will represent our industry and the roundtable with energy and integrity. On behalf of all of us, I also want to extend our sincere thanks to members of our board whose terms expire on June 30. Robert Spotswood, Dr. Tom Arnold, and Tim Byrne. Each of them has contributed meaningfully to the roundtable's success during his tenure and I want to recognize them for their service and contributions, and I look forward to continue working with them as they continue their strong engagement with the roundtable moving forward. We know we are just at the beginning of addressing many major issues. With the support of our terrific membership and board and world-class leadership and staff, the Real Estate Roundtable will continue to build on our successful legacy as we enter our third decade. We are committed to working in a sustained and effective way on promoting positive policies and taking concrete actions that will lift our country, our economy, the commercial real estate industry, and our members' businesses. I hope you'll stay with us for the rest of the day as we go through our fantastic agenda. And for now, I'm happy to turn the meeting over to our peerless leader, Jeff DeBoer. Jeff? Thank, thank you, Deb, and <clears throat> thank you very much. And it's nice to be with everyone uh, today, even if it is virtual and it's not the way we usually do business. We get, just like uh, workers in office buildings and elsewhere, we get a lot of strength and synergy and ideas from meeting personally. And unfortunately, we can't do that now, but we're going to make the best of it. And we're going to, in many ways, make this meeting more accessible and more widely viewed than some of our past meetings. So uh, welcome and thank you for your support. Thank you for your nice words, Deb. Um, I, I, I do want to say about the last uh, general area that you talked about uh, inequality uh, that is going on in this country and we are a policy organization and we will continue like we always have done uh, to work hard on with facts without hyperbole uh, with uh, well-researched points of view that that help real estate long term not short term and we know that jobs will come the economy will come back and uh, and that will take care of itself over time. But uh, that's not true necessarily in the racial inequality situation. And we need uh, as an organization and as an industry to step up to the plate and do more. And that's what, we're, that's what Deb's outlined and that's what uh, I'm pledging to do. And, uh, and we're gonna try and, and, and make a positive difference here. Now, uh, on issues in general, I hope. Well, one other little, one other item. Uh, I hope you've all downloaded our meeting app because on the meeting app you can get full bios of all the speakers. You can see the agenda. Uh, you can read detail about issues, um, and uh, you can also find our sentiment uh, survey, which we do every quarter. And if you take five minutes, it's not even going to take you five minutes to let us know how you feel about the economy today, how you feel about debt and equity availability, uh, asset values and so forth today, and how you think they will be a year from now and so forth. That's very valuable for us. So please do that. The other thing, we will be releasing our annual report uh, today, tomorrow, the next day. That'll be coming out. So watch for that. We've released a couple of videos. I hope you got to see our panel that uh, Tom Flexner and John Fish and Owen Thomas and Diane Hoskins and Jody McClain did 
regarding uh, reopening issues, reopening the economy, returning to the workplace, um, and reinforcing uh, health protections. I hope you saw that. That's a great video, and it's out now. You can see it. This morning, our policy committees, a chairman released their, uh, I released a video on them about uh, how their committees are going to be run in the next, uh, today and tomorrow. And uh, if you're not going to one of those committees virtually, you might want to think about it. There's a lot of great information, so please do that. And um, I guess the other thing that I would say before I touch on the issues a little bit is our political action committee. We've been very sensitive to the economic situation that everyone has been in uh, and experiencing, and we're working on our internal business and so forth. Uh, but we do need to ask, and we will be going out shortly uh, to ask people to contribute to our PAC so that we can participate politically the way we always have. And we're also uh, reinvigorating our, uh, uh, what we call a Trailblazers program, which is a direct giving supplemental program to our PAC. And you'll get information on that and we would urge you to participate in that. That is gonna be uh, headed up by uh, uh, Rick Clark, uh, Jeff Blau, uh, John Fish, and Ross Perot, Jr. So that's a great program and please help us on that. Now on issues, we, uh, you know, we, we have our ongoing issues that we continually work on and there's a lot of them and they're all very, very important. And our policy advisory committees are the strength and the backbone of getting those issues addressed. But there are a few that rise above that and are really, I want you, I want to try and communicate our, our top priorities to you. Since this situation started with the pandemic, we have taken the position or that we need to help our tenants, our customers. We need to help people who have lost their jobs. We need to help businesses that have been closed, either voluntarily or by government edict. And we need to help them get the resources and the capital that they need uh, to be in a, the best shape possible for when this business all uh, ends. And so primarily we have been trying to encourage ways to get funds for rent. Uh, we feel that as Deb described it, uh, the rent obligation chain is extremely important. It's extremely important for the people and the businesses that owe the rent. It's important for the landlords that receive the rent. It's important for the workers who work for those landlords so the landlords can continue to pay them, whether they're maintenance or securities or health related people. It's important for the banks and other lenders to get uh, their uh, the, the obligations satisfied. And it's important for servicers to have the income that they need to meet investor demands. So the rent obligation chain, we feel, is not only critical to our industry, but it's an underpinning of, uh, in many ways, the overall financial uh, system and state and local taxation system and the returns that pensioners get from their investments in 401ks and other investments in real estate. So we've worked hard on that. We worked hard on the PPP program, the payroll protection program to start with. Uh, we were a little disappointed that uh, in the initial uh, run of the program, only 25% of the money could be used for something other than uh, payroll. That was reformed recently down to 60%, giving more flexibility to businesses to cover overhead uh, and, and including rent, ob obviously, but we don't think that's enough. And we have spent a great deal of time designing a program operationally that we think can withstand uh, political scrutiny and uh, criticism. And it would be a rental assistance fund that would help uh, all renters, residential and business. There might have to be some uh, uh, criteria that determine uh, eligibility within those categories, but the bottom line is people need some help and businesses need some help. And that is despite the fact that uh, the rental receipts and obligations have held up in some ways better than I think many people in the industry thought they were going to hold up in the multifamily area, uh, office. Uh, obviously, retail and covered retail is, uh, is uh, in pretty uh, difficult situations. We want to make sure that those businesses can get funds to pay their rent. Uh, and yesterday, uh, the House Banking Committee held a hearing on the residential side of the uh, rental fund. 
We submitted uh, comments uh, on that, uh, talking about how business is needed as well. And the Retail Federation, the Restaurant Association, and others, and of course all the real estate groups will uh, no doubt be promoting this over the next uh, few months. So I want to bring that to your attention. You can see more details on our website, but rent is a big uh, thing for us. In the tax area, we are uh, focused primarily right now on uh, finding ways to uh, facilitate debt restructuring and modifications that we all know are coming. And we want to make sure that these modifications can be made in a way that is not uh, a penalty from a tax point of view for either the lender or the borrower. We want to facilitate that. And some, we've made some progress on this. Uh, and in particular, we need to look at the way and the rules surrounding the modification of debt that has been securitized and is held in pools. And again, uh, and, and when we show the video that I did with Secretary Mnuchin, the interview, uh, he, he points this out and we talk about some of the helpful things that the D Treasury Department has done so far and he opens the door to further, uh, further comments and advice from us. We also know going forward, or we think we know, that much like after 9-11, when uh, the private insurance marketplace and the reinsurance marketplace said that they would no longer be able to provide terrorism insurance uh, back, uh, cover, and we had to go to the government and establish the Terrorism Risk Insurance Act in 2002 that has been extended seven times now since then uh, to provide that kind of cover. We believe uh, that we need a similar program, whether it is modeled after TRIA or modeled after some new idea or what have you, but we need this program to give comfort to uh, capital providers that want to know that if a pandemic comes back in the fall or next spring that they're, uh, that they're covered for their losses and we don't go through the same type of thing. So we're working very hard on that. Uh, it's not as easy as it might sound in this case uh, because all stakeholders are, are, uh, have various points of view, but we're working on that. And of course, by the way, everything that I'm saying that I'm working on, we're working in conjunction with uh, all of our real estate trade association uh, partners and, and, uh, and, and if we all go forward together, we can be uh, much more uh, likely to succeed. And the final thing that, uh, that we're focused on, Deb mentioned, is liability. And we need uh, businesses, hospitals, schools, the economy in general needs to have some assurance that if they're doing the right thing and they're following, uh, following the, uh, the rules that have been laid down and not being negligent, and certainly not being grossly negligent, that there would be a safe harbor of some sort against frivolous lawsuits. And if this is not accomplished, if the liability is uncertain, and if there is no insurance on the capital that's being provided, I think that that will make our recovery even more difficult. And so these are the things that we're working on. There's a million other issues, as you know, and our committees do it. And uh, I would just uh, basically draw, uh, draw to a close here uh, on my remarks and invite everyone to send us emails, call us, what have you. We're, we're interested in your points of view. Our staff, I hope that you view that uh, the roundtable during this crisis situation has stepped up to the plate and met our, uh, met our obligations in, in representing you here in Washington. We've filed, when you see our annual report, you'll see the timeline and the categorization and total number of meetings, total number of of comment letters uh, and so on and so forth that we've offered up to all of the agencies on a lot of different uh, different issues. And um, we're very proud of our work. We're happy to represent this industry. We hope that, that, that you're happy being part of our industry. And we're going to continue to put our best foot forward and a positive voice forward on the most important issue that has been around for 400 years. Uh, but has now got a new uh, focus on it, and that is racial inequality, opportunities for everyone, uh, so that if people, people should be assured that uh, if they do the right thing, they have equal protection, and if they work hard and are educated, they have equal opportunity. And uh, we're gonna be part of that voice. And on that issue, I will stop for now because we, we very much want to 
shift over to a discussion with Bill Rudin and Ray McGuire from uh, Citigroup. I just want to highlight the other things for the meeting so people know. We do have the interview with Secretary Mnuchin. Uh, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Scott Gottlieb about health risks and so forth that Deb is doing uh, live. Um, we have the governor of Colorado with us briefly for a few comments, and we're going to wrap it up at uh, hopefully around 2.30 or so. And uh, you can see on the agenda, we're calling it Sip and Dip. Please get your favorite afternoon beverage and snack and uh, enjoy our conversation with Charlie Cook, who's a great political uh, forecaster and observer. And he's going to tell us what all of this means about, uh, at least from a political point of view. So I thank you all and ask Bill, uh, Bill Rudin, if you would um, take it from here. And, and we're looking forward to your conversation with, with Ray. And thank you, Ray, for being with us.